Welcome to another uh, education video by Donald L. Potter. This is Don, and we're going. To, this is July the 31st, 2017, in Odessa, Texas, and we're going to be looking at a white paper by J. Richard Gentry and Stephen Graham. It's entitled "Creating Better Readers and Writers: The Importance of Direct, Systematic Spelling and Handwriting Instruction in Improving Academic Performance." And this was published in the fall of 2010 as a white paper and if you will click on go down to the comments section and I am going to put uh, links in there um, I'm going to put links in there to this paper so you can get it and also other information that I think is important on spelling and handwriting. I'm very passionate about this because I was I believe that uh, neglecting uh, hand, spelling and handwriting instruction has uh, been very detrimental to education. I was in the classrooms in the early 90s when they came in our classroom and took away the excellent, awesome spelling and handwriting programs that we had and told us we need, no longer needed to teach handwriting uh, systematically or directly and the same with uh, spelling because the students were going to be learning all of this uh, through the their rich whole language uh, literature. I'd like uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't believe that it happened, and I believe that uh, education has suffered, and we need to get back to systematic spelling and handwriting instruction. I do a lot of tutoring, and I always include handwriting, both manuscript and cursive, and spelling instruction. And when I developed my uh, uh, blend phonics uh, reading program, I made sure that with every single lesson there are spelling words. Okay, pressing on. Let's take a look at this white paper. I'm going to read it. Uh, if you you can listen to me read the whole thing, if you would rather j just go down and click on it. Uh, my real purpose is not to get you to listen to me, but uh, rather to get hold of this paper. But I'm going to go ahead and read the paper, and I'll make a few minor uh, comments. And if you want to stick with me through the whole thing, you're welcome here. White paper, creating better readers. No subject of study is more important than reading. All other intellectual powers depend upon it. Literacy, the foundation of education. Reading is at the heart of education, the basic skill upon which all others are built. Learning to read and write provides the foundation for both academic and economic success. The vast and ever expanding array of human knowledge particularly in the sciences and technologies, means that today's students must master increasingly complex skills throughout their lives to live to complete effectively, compete effectively in the 21st century global economy. By the way, I got a student from a science school recently who's uh, going into uh, uh, fourth grade and uh, can barely read anything. And I said something to his parents. I said, well, it's a science school. And I guess they were defending their school because since it was a science school that they didn't expect them to emphasize reading. Well, scientists have to read. And that was a comment I made. Pressing on, back to our text. Learning to write letters and spell words reinforces the letter naming, phonemic, and word deciphering skills required in developing literacy. The instruction assists children in developing the pre-reading skills associated with proficient reading by the end of first or second grade phonological awareness, letter identification, and vocabulary development. Further, students' reading skills and comprehension are improved by learning the skills and processes that go into creating text. An extensive and evolving body of research shows that direct and explicit spelling and handwriting instruction is required if all students are to master the mechanics of reading and writing which is not only a requirement of federal and state legislation, but also a critical goal for a nation whose economy has transitioned from manufact a manufacturing to a knowledge base. As these skills become automatic, students are freer to concentrate on higher level thinking and communication skills needed for success in schools. I'm, I'm not going to comment on this, but every single word there is important and needs to be be fully understood the science of spelling and literacy. Today a catalog of research in education, psychology, and neurology, including brain scan studies, support the central role 
Notice that central role that spelling plays in learning to read and write proficiently. The research clearly documents that the knowledge of spelling is connected to reading, writing, and vocabulary development because they all depend on the same language skills. And notice the plethora of, of uh, footnotes we have throughout this. Spelling must be taught, not caught. Again, this is exactly the opposite of what we were told when whole language swept through um, the classrooms back in the late 80s and early 90s. Even though spelling is powerfully connected to reading and writing, it is best taught as a, now notice this, as a stand-alone subject. As a stand-alone subject. Not, not part of your, not teachers picking out spelling words out of the literature that they're reading for the week, but rather as a stand-alone subject. This, isn't, this is what I've always believed in. This is just me talking. We're look, listening to two of the world's leading experts in this field. Notice the research that we got here. Pressing on, as reported by researcher Linda Alla, a sizable number of spelling studies support direct instruction direct instruction. While approach is integrated spelling acquisition in text production, that's integrated approaches do not yet constitute a well-recognized instructional option validated by long-term empirical, re empirical research empirical research in the classroom. And I dare say that if they haven't got the research by now, that is not coming either, not going to be there. Although students acquire some spelling knowledge while reading and writing, this process should be augmented by direct instruction. That's a teacher in front of the class teaching the students that teaches students to examine words in and of themselves. A self-contained basal spelling program that teaches students to spell words from a research-based grade-by-grade spiraling curriculum based on spelling patterns and words used in student writing is more efficient than learning from context. I'll interject here that I've taught the Zaner Blo I that they don't mention Zaner Bloser in here, but both of them are involved in developing materials for the, the Zaner Bloser company. And I have used the spelling program I use other programs and I have material of my own. But nevertheless, um, this is what they're talking about. These t are two men that know what they're talking about, but also two men that have developed a curriculum. Research provides clear evidence that spelling should be taught systematically. The right words and patterns must be presented at the right time in the student's development, just as a teacher matches just right books for each student for independent reading. He or she must match the spelling words with each class. Components, and here we have a list of the components of an, expect, uh, of an effective spelling curriculum. Here's what they include. Number, uh, Research-based, developmentally appropriate word list designed specifically for students at each grade level. A bound print or cohesive electronic student text with a grade level specific Spelling dictionary and thesaurus, which assignments that can be teacher directed or assigned for independent completion. Direct explicit instruction in short 10 to 15 minute sessions daily or several times a week using a pre test study post test format. Strategies and materials to teach children self correction techniques and how to study unknown words. Word sorting exercises, spelling games, and board fun. Yes, spelling can be fun differentiation and modification to support the challenging students at all proficiency levels. At my school, when we get a student that's behind in spelling, we have to differentiate. And I use the, I personally uh, often use it in the past and have used the uh, Zaner Bloser uh, sp spelling list, even though that's not the program in our school. It helps us to differentiate. Then technology to enhance instructional practice data management. And we have a pretty interesting little thing here on the side that I'd like to read. A brief history of U.S. spelling instruction and literacy. For the first two centuries of American education, spelling was the backbone of reading instruction at, that, at a time. And y'all check out my uh, spelling book page and you'll find that 
uh, spell uh, uh, that was uh, the, the Webster's definition of a spelling book uh, was that you uh, uh, learn to uh, read the words by spelling them. At a time when teachers had relatively formal training and few tools besides a blackboard and a few standard textbooks, America became increasingly literate. Between 1870 and 1979, the nation's literacy rate increased from 80 to 99.6%. By the 1980s, however, a trend away from direct explicit spelling instruction began with the theory that teachers didn't have to teach spelling directly because this knowledge would ultimately be caught as the students immersed themselves in reading and literacy. I do not want to tell you how many workshops I went to that was telling me exactly what we read in this block right here. And the interesting thing is the older teachers that sat there during that training all shook their heads and during the breaks would tell us, don't believe a word of it. Let me press on. There is considerable evidence that this approach failed to instill literacy in millions of students, now adults. Notably in school districts in which teachers stopped paying attention to spelling. Test scores dropped and schools began to experience failure with literacy education. For example, California led the country in 1987 in adopting a literature-based elementary curriculum. The state went so far as to ban spelling books from the required textbook list. But by 1994, California's fourth grade proficiency scores had slid almost to the bottom of the 41 states and territories that participated in the 1994 National Assessment of Education Progress. As a result, an increasing number of parents advocate a back-to-basics approach to literacy, strongly desire spelling, phonics, and handwriting instructions for their children. That's true. That's why the private school that I tutor, or why I teach and tutor, gets students all the time because the parents want them to get this. Uh, pressing on, today's Spelling textbooks are based on the understanding that spelling is a, a, a psycholinguistic conceptual process involving knowledge of alphabet, syllable, word meaning, and the history of words in English. Effective spelling instruction explores patterns that can be detected in sound, structure, and meaning of words. It covers the understanding of concepts, uh, excuse me, concepts of words, segmenting sounds and syllables, recognizing letters and learning how letters relate to sounds. It helps students develop insights into how words are spelled based on sound letter correspondences, meaningful parts of words such as roots and suffixes, and word origins and history. Teaching spelling is a brain-building boon. Boy, I like that. Teaching spelling is a brain-building boon to effective reading, writing, creating a dictionary in the brain for every reader and writer. The more deeply and thoroughly a student knows a word, the more likely he or she is to recognize it, spell it, define it, and use it appropriately in speech and writing. Now we're going to get into the handwriting section, okay? Uh, handwriting wires the brain for literacy. And again, they took away the handwriting books. My own district, uh, at least the last I heard, has an embed, what they call an embedded handwriting program. Uh, yeah, don't ask me what that is. Anyway, I do know they have no, unless they just started, they may have. Handwriting wires the brain for literacy. Solid familiarity with the visual shapes of individual letters is an, absolutely, is an absolute prerequisite for learning to read. Writing aids in letter recognition, the most reliable predictor of future reading success. Learning to write by hand plays a key role in developing literacy, and handwriting skills remain crucial for success throughout school. The mental processes involved in handwriting are connected to other important learning functions, such as storing information in a memory, retrieving information, manipulating letters, and linking them to sounds. The letters of the alphabet are not learned holistically. They are acquired through a visual system in the brain that breaks down each letter into its parts. To write a letter, a child must identi identify the letter by name, memorize the letter form, and quickly access and retrieve this form from memory. Um, if, uh, manuscript and cursive handwriting. Effective uh, handwriting instruction begins with teaching manuscript alphabet, forming the vertical and horizontal 
horizontal lines of the manuscript alphabet helps students master the seemingly abstract forms of 26 upper and lowercase letters, punctuation marks, and numerals. 114 symbols in all they must, that they must decode while learning to read. These printed upper case and lowercase letters closely resemble the type used in children's book which reinforce letter recognition. I think there is a bit of controversy uh, about the benefit of teaching manuscript before cursive, although when I'm working with kids up to four years old, maybe five, uh, I will always use manuscript. But in first grade, I generally teach cursive, although when I work tutor kids in the public schools, I have to teach manuscript and private schools because none of the kids, not one, not one child coming to me in the last 10 to 15 years has had good handwriting that is concerning grip or letter formation, not one. Pressing on, uh, let's look at the little box there in the, on the right side. Teachers commit to handwriting but need support. And this is why I'm publishing uh, handwriting videos. I've already uh, done uh, one on uh, my shortcut to manuscript, and I've done one on the left hand, teaching left handed students. And I'm going to be doing some for right hand. I broke my wrist in a bicycle accident a uh, couple months back and I'm not able to do the right hand video quite yet unless I get a student to do it. Anyway, most teach and um, I'll put at the bottom of this uh, uh, in the comments below I'm going to put a uh, I'll put a link to my uh, handwriting material and I have a handwriting page uh, on my website that has uh, links to literally hundreds over a hundred I'm sure uh, websites and books and articles. Most teachers today understand, we're on the box on the side there, understand the need for quality handwriting instruction. In one study, nine out of every ten teachers indicated they taught handwriting, averaging 70 minutes of instruction per week. There was considerable variability in the report instructional time, in the reported instructional time. However, as the standard devi uh, deviation was 55 minutes, for those taught handwriting, instructional time ranged from two minutes to an hour a day. <laughs> About one of every two teachers spent 10 minutes or less a day teaching handwriting, with one in eight spending five minutes or less. Okay, only 12% of teachers indicated that the education courses taken in college adequately prepared them to teach handwriting. Despite this lack of formal preparation, the majority of teachers used a variety of recommended instructional practices for teaching handwriting. The application of such practices, though, was applied unevenly, raised concerns about the quality of the handwriting instruction for all children. Almost three of every five teachers, 61 percent, reported using a commercial program to teach handwriting. That seems very, very high to me. Our district has not had a hand, uh, formal handwriting program uh, since the early 90s. I think they may be getting one. But I don't know about what happened to all those students in between. Anyway, when teachers were asked to identify the most common handwriting problems experienced, uh, I'm going to skip that. Let's go on down to the next part. Uh, pressing on, uh, one study of the first grade students, uh, first grade students found that examining a model of the letter marked with numbered arrows indicating the nature, order, and direction of component strokes combined with reproducing letter from memory produced the ha best handwriting results. Uh, that may be, uh, I generally do not use workbooks to teach handwriting, nor do I use any or much trace and copy. I use a more direct method, but anyway. Most students progress to cursive handwriting by third grade. My students learn it in first, and I have taught numerous kindergartners, but pressing on. Studies have shown that cursive is important. Hmm, that's interesting. That cursive is important for cognitive de development because it requires fluid movement, eye-hand coordination, and fine motor skill development according to Francis Van Tassel, an associate professor at the University of North Texas. Well, they could have quoted me too, but I'm not a professor. But I do have years of experience. Components of effective curriculum. Uh, this is important to read. An effective handwriting curriculum gives teachers and students the resources to master both manuscript and cursive handwriting through the following. 
By the way, if perhaps you if you have a good handwriting program, use it. If you don't have a good one, or you would just like to see what I think makes a good handwriting program, check out my videos on my shortcut to cursive and my shortcut to uh, manuscript. And uh, that's the way I teach it um, personally. Anyway, lesson plans to provide a logical sequence for studying letter formation is developmentally appropriate ways. For example, here we go. Letters that are easier for younger uh, children to produce are introduced before more difficult ones. Oh, I violate that when I teach the letters in alphabetical order. Uh, but I've not personally found out a problem since I use a clock face system to teach the letters. Uh, anyway, let, but that makes sense to, 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 to introduce them according to like the ones that are easier, but I haven't really found out much of a problem teaching them in alphabetical order. And when I get done, then the students know how to write the alphabet in alphabetical order, whereas if you teach them out of order, uh, they uh, will have to still go back and learn how to do it in order. But anyway, I have no problem with what they're saying here. I, I do it a little bit different, but uh, letters that are formed in similar ways or share common characteristics are grouped together. Okay, like I could teach the letters that start two o'clock on the uh, on uh, two on the clock together, but I prefer to do it in ABC order, just because I'm trying to teach them to write the alphabet. And most kids coming to me can't write the alphabet from A to Z. Letters that occur more frequently are introduced earlier than less common letters. Uh, you can do that. Again, I prefer not to teach any reading until the students know all the letters of the alphabet. I think we should delay the reading until they can write all the letters of the alphabet and identify them by letter name. Pressing on. By the way, Marilyn Adams uh, agrees with teaching. The, well, she teaches the letter names first, and then she teaches the letters by their shape. Uh, uh, commonalities and shape. Anyway, uh, easily confused or reversible letters such as U and D or B and D are not included in the same unit. Okay, I have no problem with that, but since I teach them in alphabetical order, it doesn't make a whole lot, make much difference. The D and the B, um, I don't have too much problem, I don't have any problem with that because I teach the students that the D starts with a circle and the B starts with a line. It's never been a problem for my students. Students master forming each individual letter before proceeding to connecting uh, letters into words and words into sentences, which makes sense. Textbooks are pro uh, that provide instruction for writing each individual letter with numbered arrows indicating, we just read that a bit ago, uh, and some models. Little tracing may not be too bad. I don't use a whole lot of trace and copy, though. Um, I think that once the kids know how to form the letter, they should be writing the letter and not set their tracing a whole lot. Explicit and, but I do agree that the letter should be, it's good to have it there on the page so they can look up and see it. Uh, explicit hands-on instruction by teachers in how to form letters for each letter, how to connect letters into words, and how to make words into sentences. This instruction should occur in short 10 to 15 minute stations daily or several times a week. I agree with that, that's the way I do it. Practice pages with printed letters, words, and sentences above blank lines where the students can copy them without the distraction of having to look up to a board and then back to their... Now that's if you're using a workbook. Again, I don't use workbooks in teaching it, but I can and I have, and so that's all right. Um, Though this careful through this through this carefully planned explicit handwriting instruction, students develop le legible and fluent handwriting. As students learn to recognize and, and reproduce letters and words quickly and effortlessly, their minds are free to concentrate on meaning when writing. Boy, if that's the only thing you get out of uh, of this video, man, I've accomplished something. This is awesome. It, you're freeing up concentration so they can understand you know we spend a lot of time trying to teach kids how to get to the meaning well what we really need to do is be teaching letter recognition so that they can free up concentration their minds are freer to concentrate on meaning when writing and pressing on this likely allows them to generate organize and express ideas more effectively. That is correct, only instead of saying likely, I'd probably say this definitely <laughs> allows them to generate, organize, and express ideas more uh, effectively. And if you'll pace, um, take a look at uh, uh, precision teaching. And there's a lot of information on my website about precision teaching. Creating better writers. Uh, writing and learning, writing and learning and thinking are the same process. Mm, very interesting. 
Spelling is the hallmark of good writing. Spelling instruction aids in vocabulary formation, which increases depth and complexity of expression, giving students a ready supply of words needed to tell fictional stories and write essays and research papers. Well, this is choice stuff you're getting here. Good spelling supports speed and fluency in writing. When students struggle to spell a word, they must pause in the writing process, often causing them to lose their train of thought and become frustrated. Struggling with spelling also limits students' range of expression. As a result, many students will choose to use a much simpler word that they know how to spell rather than use more sophisticated words that um, lives in their oral vocabulary but for which they are less sure of spelling. Notice the, notice the, uh, the footnotes here. We got all this is backed up with, with research. This paper is not only good, but this paper is uh, well-researched and authoritative. Handwriting, entry to a lifetime of composition. By the way, I want to praise my, I started school in 1953. My first grade teacher taught me cursive. And I have loved writing all my life, and I believe it's due to her. So here we have it. Writing skills are critical. Notice the word critical for both academic and professional success. Handwriting presents the biggest barrier students must overcome in learning to write. The focused thought that young writers must put into how to form letters interferes with other writing processes. I got a student named Adrian, a really cool kid in the uh, third grade. He wants to help me make some YouTube videos, so you're probably going to be hearing about this, this bright boy. And when he came to me, he could barely, he couldn't even write the alphabet all the way through going into fourth grade. And so he has an assignment every day. Week after week, he writes the alphabet. We're just using the manuscript right now, but he writes the alphabet every day. And oh yeah, you should see his handwriting. And one day I asked him to close his eyes. He said, I can't write with my eyes closed. And I said, sure you can. And I wrote the alphabet with the eyes closed. And then he did. He said, wow, that's something, Mr. Potter. And I said, that's right. Changing young lives by teaching them how to write. Handwriting is important, and the neglect why it was neglected in his case and in the case of literally hundreds of other students that are coming to me for tutoring uh, just defies imagination, boggles my mind. Early systematic handwriting instruction, here we are, uh, improves the quality and quantity of writing, not just its legibility. The goal of a handwriting curriculum, and I want to really emphasize this, the goal of a handwriting curriculum is to teach children to write letters legibly and efficiently so that writing becomes, and get this, fluid and automatic. You see why I got Adrian writing the alphabet every single day, even with his eyes closed. And when he sits down and starts writing stories and stuff, it's going to come really easy because you don't have to be thinking about how to write the letter. Okay, the need for handwriting instruction is not limited to early grades. In fourth through six, grades four through six, handwriting fluency still accounts for 42% of variability in the quality of a child's writing, children's writing. The student's handwriting speed continues to increase at least until ninth grade. It's very important. So we don't stop. They need to have that instruction every year. Recent research shows that the development of higher order thinking skills, including problem solving and analytical thinking, is related, get this, directly to the student's ability to put thoughts on paper using intel intelligible language. The medium of expressive language allows students to reflect on ideas and translate knowledge and meaning. Fostering success in uh, ELL, that's uh, English language learners. I'm going to skip. I was a bilingual teacher, but I think I'm going to skip that um, because that all makes sense, but we're dealing with uh, more with regular students. By the way, when I was a bilingual teacher, I taught all my kids. I let them write Spanish in manuscript, but when they wrote Spanish, cuando escribieron español en mi clase, when they wrote Spanish in my, or English, uh, pardon. When they wrote English, English in my classroom, they only wrote cursive. That includes second grade and up. Uh, building blocks for succeeding in a technologically driven world. Hmm, well, I thought uh, when computers come along, everybody said we wouldn't need handwriting. Well, let's see this. Citing the availability of personal computers, smartphones, and spell checker programs, some discount the importance of spelling and handwriting in the modern world. 
Yet educators and researchers agree that spelling and handwriting will always be an important part of students' education. Here's why. First, knowledge of spelling is, connect, is connected to reading, writing, and vocabulary development, which all depend on the same language skill. 80% of elementary schools rarely, if ever, use word processing software for writing. Very few classes have enough computers to make use of word processing possible. While older students use computers to complete lessons, perform research, and write papers, handwriting continues to play a crucial role in note-taking and in the creative process. The most equitable curriculum standards are based on textbook, paper, and pencil. Poor, schools, poor school districts lack access to computers, and fewer students from disadvantaged, home, disadvantaged homes have access to computers and high-speed Internet. And finally, spell check programs actually increase the need to teach spelling and precise, and precise word usage more thoroughly. These programs can only uh, can identify only words that are misspelled. They ignore words that are correctly spelled but misused. And I'm sure you've seen that in emails and other things. Pressing on. In society in which texting and word processing are, common, are commonplace, handwrite, handwritten communication is perceived as, a dis, as distinctive and special. Documents such as business letters, checks, and legal documents generally require handwriting signatures. Many historical documents as well as modern letters and thank you notes are written in cursive. This puts students who cannot read cursive handwriting at a disadvantage. Absolutely. One time somebody told me their son uh, had a degree in engineering and couldn't write cursive and they didn't miss it at all and I told them, well, they, they were robbed of their American heritage. Cursive, folks, is crucial. It has to be taught, and it's not that hard, and it's greatly beneficial. Pressing on. Incre increasing instructional effectiveness is through technology. Today, oh, th this is pretty cool. Today's educators employ a variety of technology platforms to increase the effectiveness of the spelling and handwriting. And uh, I want to mention Zaner Bloser. Wow, they got an interactive whiteboard that, that just won't quit. Interactive whiteboard applications are ideal for presenting word sorts, research-based technique for helping students recognize and understand common spelling patterns, as well as the relationship between and among words demonstrated by spelling patterns. Oh, here's the one I wanted to read. I wanted to, yeah. In handwriting instruction, the whiteboard, okay, in interactive whiteboard, applications help teachers demonstrate proper letter formation and encourage students to emulate the correct strokes. And I've seen some of the Zaner Bloser. It actually shows the stroke on the board, and the kid can put their finger on it where it starts and follow it around, which is uh, really helpful. Uh, in addition, research has demonstrated that games are a valuable incentive to spelling practice, and digital games bring this research to the 21st century. Uh, I think we're about done. No, we're not. Importance of explicit and direct instruction because of the role they play in the I'm going to read just a little bit and then we're going to stop here because you're going to can download this and read it and out of over 33 minutes that's like a no-no on YouTube because of the role they play in developing literacy and composition skills spelling and handwriting are critical 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 to overall academic achievement and I'm not going to read all that you can see it spelling shows that a lot of this is kind of repetition of the things that we have above and it's talking about what a good uh, program should be like and um, oh this is pretty this is important a small investment yields significant and lasting results for students schools and society I'm always told we don't have time for handwriting well make time because you're not going to have success in the rest of your program if you don't get your handwriting and spelling right the fate of state and national economies rests on the ability of U.S. thinkers and workers to compete on a global scale. As g governments struggle to balance budget, they must make difficult decisions about allocating limited funds. Yet research shows that investments in school quality uh, in school quality investments in school quality improvements can, over time, cover the cost entirely of primary and secondary schooling. Because reading and writing are required to master any subject, a small investment in effective spelling and handwriting instruction pays big, 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 big rewards in increasing student performance across the entire school curriculum. 
Textbooks that provide the most current research-based spelling and handwriting instruction are essential to teach these subjects effectively. In handwriting, students must be able to trace over and write directly beneath the appropriate letter. In spell, uh, this is just talking about the textbooks. Again, I'm not going to go into that. A lot of that's kind of been covered before, but this is what you want to look like, want to, to, to look for. Uh, here it talks about boosting uh, cross-curricular. Again, a lot of what we have studied before is some kind of some repetition here. Saving money, information about the authors. All right, this is Don Potter. I'm going to be signing off here, and if you have stayed with me all this time, I want to thank you so much. I am sure that the information on this is going to be a big help to you as a teacher, an educator, administrator, um, a policymaker, a politician. And so we hope to see you again with our next video.